Our speaker is Dr. Gul Munas. Dr. Munas is the Director of Head and Neck Imaging, a Fellowship Program Director and an Associate Professor at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. She's a world-renowned head and neck uh, neuroradiologist. She's a leading educator who has uh, taught residents and fellows uh, in Boston and now in New York. And um, her, her education is well-respected around the world. So thank you, Dr. Munas, for um, giving this talk to us. Her uh, topic today is imaging of oral cavity. We're going to be talking about oral cavity cancer. And um, I have to say, I believe that you guys probably see more of this um, in Tanzania than uh, here in the U.S. Because um, I know, uh, for example, in India, which is where my home country is, this is a very, very, uh, you know, common uh, cancer. And so um, the way I'm going to approach it is we're going to first start talking about the anatomy. I'm going to spend a lot of time on anatomy because it can be a little bit confusing and um, you know, I think uh, we, we need to learn the different subsites of the anatomy and, and then, then we'll turn, learn a little bit about the staging of the cancer and then uh, eventually we'll show some cases. So what is the oral cavity? Um, so the oral cavity is the most anterior subdivision of the aerodigestive tract. And uh, some people divide the oral cavity into an oral cavity proper versus the vestibule. And so what this implies is, I don't know if you, can you guys see my arrows? I'm moving arrows here. Yeah? No? Okay. Anyway, so um, oral cavity proper is going to be uh, the central part. Uh, and then the vestibule is when you puff your cheek out, the part that sticks out, your cheeks, that's called the vestibule. So that's, um, and you can kind of see the, uh, the vestibule on, on, on this patient. Um, so that's uh, one distinction. And then how do you uh, uh, tell the margins of the oral cavity? So um, the oral cavity is separated from the oropharynx by these um, uh, circumvallate papilla in your tongue. And also the anterior uh, tonsillar pillar, the anterior margin of the anterior tonsillar pillar, if you draw a imaginary line, that differentiates the oral cavity from the oropharynx. And these are two very different uh, anatomical sites and they have different um, sort of manifestations of cancer. And uh, today we don't have the time to go into the oropharynx, so uh, we'll restrict ourselves to this more anterior um, part of the aerodigestive, uh, aerodigestive tract. So uh, <clears throat> the circumvallate papilla divides the tongue into the oral tongue or the oral cavity tongue and the posterior tongue or the base of tongue. And the base of tongue, um, as I mentioned, is part of the oropharynx. So uh, inferiorly, um, the oral cavity uh, is uh, defined by the uh, floor of mouth, also known as, uh, you know, it's formed by the malohyoid muscle, which you can kind of see on this uh, other drawing as well. Uh, the anterior margin of the oral cavity is gonna be your lips. And laterally, as I mentioned, it's the buccal uh, uh, mucosa. So when you puff your cheek out, uh, that's your lateral margin of the oral cavity. And you can kind of see, uh, the same thing on this MRI. This is the buccinator muscle. So when you puff your cheek out, this goes out. And so, and the mucosa which aligns that is, is, is a part of the oral cavity, the vestibule, as you, as you would remember. And, uh, and this is uh, showing you the gingiva or the gum, which is also part of the oral cavity. So let's look at it on um, imaging. So uh, if you draw a line, so this is the imaginary line along the circumvallate papillae. And this is the anterior tonsillar pillar. So um, you can uh, kind of see that this is the imaginary line uh, differentiate, demarcating the oral cavity from the oropharynx. Uh, on a sagittal image, you want to look at the hard palate, soft palate junction. And then anything posterior to that is going to be oral, oropharynx. And anything anterior to that is going to be oral cavity. And on this uh, coronal image, uh, this is just to show you the inferior extent uh, which is the floor of mouth. Anything below that is going to be the submandibular space. 
So there are different subsites, uh, which are important to know because, uh, you know, these are different subsites that can be involved with cancer. So uh, again, the different subsites of oral cavity are the lip. So upper lip, lower lip. There's this area called the retromolar trigone, which we'll talk about in some detail uh, as to the anatomy. Uh, buccal mucosa, we talked about already. The, this is the cheek. When you puff your cheek out, that's your buccal mucosa. Then you have the upper and lower alveolar ridge on which your, your teeth are, uh, are stuck, basically. And the uh, associated uh, gum, also known as the gingiva. Then you have the hard palate, the floor of mouth, and the oral tongue. So these are all, all the subsites of, of the oral cavity. And it's important to know these subsites because oral cavity cancer is staged uh, according to these subsites. So let's talk about the retromolar trigone. And um, I've often seen tra trainees have a hard time understanding what exactly this is. So uh, essentially, this is just the mucosa overlying the area posterior to the last mandibular molar. So if you stick your, uh, take a second, put, a, put your finger, take a finger and put it, stick it behind the last molar of your mandible. That's exactly uh, what is known as the retromolar trigone. Um, and it's a, it's a crossroad of, uh, for spread of tumor uh, to and from the oral cavity. Um, and there's a structure called the pterygomandibular raphe, which lies just beneath the mucosa of the retromolar trigone. So this uh, structure uh, is the pterygomandibular raphe, the white structure uh, that you can see. It's kind of the small white structure. And... Uh, uh, the pterygomandibular raphe uh, provides attachment to the buccinator muscle. So this is the buccinator muscle, and uh, you can see that there is a, uh, it's being attached to this, this, uh, this um, important structure. And it also provides connection, uh, attachment to the superior constrictor muscle. So the muscle at the back of this white tiny dot is the superior constrictor muscle. So um, on imaging, uh, you can see uh, nicely the buccinator muscle, uh, which I have, uh, uh, you can see the pink arrow. And uh, you can see this uh, superior constrictor muscle more posteriorly. And this is the region of the yellow uh, uh, triangular uh, structure is the, is the uh, retromolar trigone. So, um, so let's talk a little bit more about the pterygomandibular raphe. Uh, so it's, it's a fibrous band which connects the uh, mylohyoid line of the mandible to the medial pterygoid plate. And it serves as a route of spread of cancer from the retromolar trigone uh, to the maxilla. So um, this is just a, you know, a crossroad, basically. If you have a cancer which goes to any, of the, uh, any part of this attachment, it can easily travel along this pterygomandibular raphe. Now, uh, on imaging, it's kind of hard to see it, but um, you, you can sort of guess where it is. So let me show you some um, images. So uh, this is the uh, sort of the retromolar trigone. And uh, you can um, kind of see that this is, um, you know, this is the expected attachment of the pterygomandibular raphe. Uh, you may not be able to see it too well, but uh, you can kind of guess um, as to what its location would be. Um, tumors of the retromolar trigone have a high propensity to invade bone um, because they're right adjacent to the maxilla and the mandible. And so they tend to um, invade lo locally into the bone. Some more anatomy. So we can just see the alveolar ridge, uh, the superior and inferior alveolar ridge, uh, and, the, and the gingiva that attaches to it. And also nicely see the uh, retromolar trigone in its relationship to the, uh, the back of the, uh, the mandible. So the gingiva um, is also known as the gum. So, so it's the mucosa covering uh, the, the, the gum. And uh, it's classified into uh, buccal, uh, which is the lateral gingiva, and lingual, which is the medial gingiva. So, so if you have a tumor, for example, uh, uh, more superficially, you'll say, there's a lesion of the, of the gingiva, the, the buccal gingiva, 
And if the lesion is more, more uh, internal, then you'll say, um, or, or medial to the alveolar ridge, you'll say it's a lesion of the lingual gingiva. So it's important to know the terminology that our surgeons use, because this way you can communicate your findings to them uh, better. So, so remember the terminology, lateral is buccal and uh, medial is lingual gingiva. There is a structure called the gingiva buccal sulcus. Again, that's important to know because it is the junction between the gingiva or the gum and the buccal mucosa. So remember I told you that the buccal mucosa lines the vestibule of the oral cavity. So he, uh, you can see on the CT, coronal CT, that the, this, um, I don't know if my arrows are projecting at all, but there is a, um, uh, the, the, uh, you know, this is kind of a puff cheek technique. So this would be the buccal mucosa would be more uh, lateral and the more medial would be the gingiva and right at the bottom where the two meet is the gingival buccal sulcus. So you have the inferior gingival buccal sulcus is inferior and the superior gingival buccal sulcus is superior. So again, important to know your terminologies and anatomy because if you don't, then you're, you're not gonna be able to describe the lesion appropriately. Uh, more uh, anatomy, normal anatomy, uh, which is part of uh, oral cavity is the heart palate. So uh, remember uh, the heart palate forms the roof of your mouth and it's the superior margin of the oral cavity. It also forms the inferior margin of the nasal cavity. So you can kind of see the heart palate very nicely on this sagittal and um, axial images. And um, it's formed by two bones. So you have the palatine process of the maxilla anteriorly and the palatine bone horizontal plate, plate posteriorly. And um, you know, you can also look for certain foramina, which are very important in the heart palate. So anteriorly you have the incisive canal. So many a times you'll see an, uh, a cyst there, which is called an incisive canal <clears throat> cyst. Uh, posteriorly, you can see that there is a um, uh, foramen called the greater palatine foramen which leads up on this coronal to the greater palatine canal and eventually to the pterygo palatine fossa. So this is how a, a cancer in the heart palate will then uh, uh, travel uh, superiorly and go into the pterygo palatine fossa and then potentially even into the um, intracranially. Um, uh, so the, again, the sagittal image showing you nicely uh, the root uh, the greater palatine foramen going all the way up to the pterygopalatine fossa. All right, let's talk about the tongue, the oral tongue. Um, so again, anatomy is really important. So uh, oral tongue is formed by intrinsic and extrinsic muscles, and uh, they're innervated by <clears throat> hypoglossal nerve, which is cranial nerve 12. So let's talk about the intrinsic muscles. Uh, they're formed by these four interdigitating superior and inferior oblique, longitudinal, and transverse muscles. So this is um, where the yellow uh, arrow is projects um, is the um, intrinsic tongue muscles. And you can kind of see them on MRI as this sort of gray blob, uh, which is sort of oval shaped, corresponding to the, the cartoon figure on the right. And those are the intrinsic tongue muscles. The extrinsic tongue muscles uh, are genioglossus, in the midline and hyoglossus more laterally. And uh, again, you can kind of see them nicely on the MRI. Um, genoglossus are two paired muscles in the midline. And hyoglossus is this more curvilinear structure uh, laterally, corresponding to the, <clears throat> the cartoons that you see on the right side. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there's also uh, <clears throat> some terminology that we should be aware of, and that's called the root of tongue. So what is the root of tongue? And again, this is important because the surgeons use this terminology. So root of tongue is the region <clears throat> deep to the uh, mobile tongue. So if you see uh, the geniohyoid muscle, the GH uh, on this cartoon. So in the midline, um, uh, basically you have the genioglossus and geniohyoid muscles, uh, also known as the geniohyoid genioglossus complex and the lingual septum between the two sides of the, of the hemi tongue. So this, this area would be called the root of tongue. So, um, and on MRI, um, it projects um, uh, on both on the coronal and sagittal images. And um, so again, important to know terminology so that you communicate uh, appropriately. 
Um, so we talked about this. I'm just going to skip this, but you can nicely see the anatomy again. You can see the intrinsic tongue muscles and extrinsic tongue muscles here. What is the floor of mouth? So we briefly touched upon this, but floor of mouth is essentially formed by the malohyoid muscle, as you can see. And the malohyoid muscle is, forms a sling of the floor of mouth and it uh, attaches to the mandible at the malohyoid line of the mandible. And uh, so, and you, uh, you, know, you also have mucosa covering it. So basically the floor of mouth is essentially the mucosa which covers uh, the malohyoid muscle. So if you move your tongue up and you, you feel uh, what's, what's below your tongue, that's actually your floor of mouth. And that's the mucosa there. Um, so I'm not going to, uh, sort of get into it more into detail. So now let's, so we've set the stage with some anatomy. So now let's talk a little bit about the actual cancer. Um, so, um, it's a pretty common cancer and, um, oral cavity cancer. Uh, the vast majority are going to be squamous cell carcinomas. Um, in North America, uh, they tend to be related to alcohol or tobacco. Um, in India, uh, most cancers are related to uh, betel nut um, or pawn um, chewing. I don't know if you have uh, um, a similar social practice in, in Tanzania, but um, because of that, uh, you know, that's, um, you know, so most of the uh, tumors because of the betel nut chewing tend, tend to be more in the buccal mucosa. And that's, you know, when you puff your cheek out, that's your buccal mucosa. So, um, so tongue and buccal mucosa are the most common locations in, <clears throat> in, uh, in India. Uh, in the US, it's usually the tongue and floor of mouth. But uh, I mean, I've also read some statistic about lip cancer being the most common. Um, I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I, I still think I see more uh, tongue. I still see more oral tongue. So in my uh, experience, I would say oral tongue is the most common in, 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 in the West. Um, uh, unlike oropharyngeal cancer, in which HPV can be associated uh, with, with the cancer, in oral cavity cancer, it's actually a very uh, small minority of, of cases which have associated HPV infection. So let's talk about uh, staging. I'm not going to spend too much time because this is all available uh, online, but uh, I'm going to hit upon some important points here. So uh, the eighth edition of the AJCC uh, classification system for uh, um, head and neck cancers came out last year in 2018. And uh, so there were some important uh, differences um, between the seventh edition and the eighth edition. And uh, the most important uh, change that has occurred is that we are now talking about depth of invasion in, in oral tongue cancers. So it used to be, we only talked about the size of the cancer, you know, whether it was less than two CM, two to four CM or more than four CM. And now uh, in addition to that, we also talk about the depth of invasion. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. And then previously they used to include <clears throat> involvement of the extrinsic muscles of the tongue as part of the uh, uh, moderately advanced local disease. And they took that away in the eighth edition. And um, uh, T4B is, is very advanced local disease, um, uh, which still remains the same, that hasn't changed. So uh, if you see a difference between very advanced and moderately advanced, so very advanced is basically tumor in the masticator space, uh, pterygoid plates, skull base, or encasement of the carotid artery. So if you have tumor which does not fulfill these criteria by definition, and it's a big tumor, by definition, it's going to be a T48 cancer. So that's just an important point. And um, I, don't, I don't encourage my fellows to remember um, staging, but I do want them to have access to this criteria because we can tell the surgeon, uh, you know, what are the areas involved. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't stage the tumor for the surgeons because, um, you know, there's a lot of like clinical um, input that is needed. So I, I basically give them information. Hey, this is the size of a tumor. Hey, is it involving the bone? Is it going through the adjacent floor of mouth? You know, so I, I look at the T4A, uh, you know, all the important uh, landmarks that they're looking for. And I tell them whether they're involved or not, but I don't actually stage the tumor for them. Um, 
So this is what depth of invasion is. So, um, and this is a new concept. So essentially you draw a, a, a straight line along the lateral margin uh, of the tongue, and then you draw a line perpendicular to that. And that, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, horizontal line is, uh, is called depth of invasion. And you measure it, uh, you know, uh, basically it could be less than five uh, uh, millimeters, between five to 10 millimeters or more than 10 millimeters. And uh, if it's more than 20 millimeters, it becomes T4A. So, um, so let's uh, talk about oral tongue cancer because that's uh, what I see the most um, in, in, in the US. So um, this is um, really the most classic location for an oral, oral uh, tongue cancer is gonna be the, the lateral margin or, or the undersurface, uh, also known as the ventral surface of the tongue. Uh, like I said, prognosis depends on depth of invasion. And the important thing for the radiology is, uh, radiologist is not to diagnose the mucosal lesion. The, I mean, the surgeon, ENT surgeon can see this really well. What they're looking for is whether is it going to the, uh, involving the lingual septum? Is it crossing the midline? Um, is it going to floor of mouth? So the deep extension? And is there any invasion of the bone? Because all of those are factors which, uh, which upstage the tumor, as I, as I showed you earlier. Um, one important thing is I've missed a whole lot of these oral tongue cancers. That's because there's so much spray artifact on CT the, and, and, you know, people have dental uh, work. And so you're going to miss. So, I mean, I encourage my residents to uh, look up the, um, you know, medical record on every head and neck cancer patient, because um, especially the ones where I see nothing, then I know that I'm dealing with like one of those like hidden oral cavity tumors, um, uh, especially retromolar trigone or oral, uh, or oral tongue. So just remember that that's, um, you know, it, it may be subtle and you may miss it. Um, and and the, the important thing is uh, just make sure that you're looking for those important things that, I mean, the, the, the factors that make the tumor um, higher stage. So this is just a tiny little tumor, uh, less than 2 cm. Uh, and you can kind of see that um, it's on the... Um, uh, lateral margin of the tongue, which is the classic location. And on the um, PET, uh, you can see that it's uh, taking up uh, um, glucose. So uh, this is a, just a small uh, oral, oral tongue lesion, um, uh, T1. This, on the other hand, is uh, a T4A or moderately locally advanced tumor because you can see that it's um, probably the depth of invasion is going to be, you know, 20 millimeters. I, I don't, you know, if you, if you, if you draw a margin, uh, you know, draw, draw the uh, line along the lateral margin, and then you sort of uh, draw a horizontal line. Visually, this looks like it's going to be about 20 millimeters. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big tumor. It's crossing the midline. That's a very important finding uh, because it precludes uh, the patient from having a hemiglossectomy. So if you, if you, you have an oral t uh, tongue cancer which crosses the midline and, and involves the contralateral neurovascular bundle, that makes it a um, pretty, uh, pretty locally advanced tumor and the patient uh, will have to undergo total glossectomy instead of partial hemiglossectomy. So those are important factors that the surgeon is looking for. Tell them about this lymph node. You can see that there's a rounded uh, left uh, level one uh, lymph node uh, in the submandibular uh, space. And um, even though if you measure it, it's probably going to be less than one cm, but the fact that it's rounded makes it pathologic. So those are important factors to remember. Uh, this is a, a, a patient who has a tumor of the oral cavity. And again, if you just saw it on the CT, you're going to miss it, right? I, I probably would have missed this if, because, I mean, the, the surgeon already knows that there's a cancer there. So it, it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, but... Um, you know, uh, what they want us to tell them here is, is their involvement of the underlying bone. So most uh, oral cavity cancers uh, arise, uh, I'm sorry, um, lip cancers arise from this vermilion border, which is the border uh, between the skin and the edge of the, um, of the lips. So you can kind of see it on the, on the lower image. Um, and like I said, um, uh, the tumor can then extend either into the underlying bone or it can extend laterally uh, uh, into the um, skin. Um, and so uh, this is a much more ag aggressive uh, tumor of the lip. Um, 
And this is going to be, uh, it's more than 4 cm. So it's going to be a T3 uh, uh, cancer. And you can see that this is uh, actually um, involving uh, the gingiva buccal sulcus and going into the buccal space. And um, the bone uh, still looks like it's not involved, but it's, it's, it's a pretty advanced cancer. So um, this would be a, a T3, more than 4 cm. Let's talk about uh, buccal mucosa cancers. And this is where I show you all the, all the cancers that I've missed. So can anybody guess which side the tumor is here? Um, I'm giving you one second, otherwise. Uh, so uh, to me, um, it looks like there's a little bit extra soft tissue here uh, on the left side. Um, uh, and, uh, and that's the tumor. And hey, I, I probably missed this. And that's because, you know, if you don't have history, uh, you really, uh, it's really, really hard to find these. So the good news is that it's like the surg surgeon has probably knows that there's cancer there. So hopefully they'll put it on, on your uh, history sheet. And then you know, uh, you know exactly what they're looking for, which is to see if there's an invasion of the, of the bone or is it going up to the skin? Uh, or is it going to parotid, you know, so things of that nature. So um, you can help yourself, however, by having a patients do uh, this puff cheek technique. So you basically uh, inflate the, the cheeks out and image the patient during a puff cheek maneuver. And that's when you can nicely see the submucosal extent of the tumor. Um, on the left side, you can kind of see this is the same patient that I showed earlier but you can now clearly see that there's a thickening of the, oops, sorry. There's thickening of the uh, buccal mucosa on the left. Uh, and uh, you can also look for involvement of the bone, uh, adjacent bone, perineural extension, or extension into the masticator space, which makes it a, a higher uh, grade tumor. So there it is. So remember, uh, if you actually um, are protocoling a case like this uh, and you come upon a history of buccal cancer, this would be, would be a nice uh, trick in your back pocket to try and make it uh, look, uh, you know, um, uh, make the tumor stand out. Um, so we talked about that. Um, this is another uh, tumor and this one uh, is a buccal mucosa cancer. You can nicely see um, on the puff cheek technique on the left. But here you can nicely uh, also appreciate the involvement of the bone. And then again, that makes it a more locally advanced uh, T4 cancer. So, uh, you know, these are the kind of questions that you have to answer for your surgeon. Um, this is um, another uh, patient who has a um, tumor of the um, buccal mucosa. And uh, I had told you earlier that uh, these tumors can then uh, travel uh, into the um, uh, retromolar trigone because they're all sort of in the same, same uh, neighborhood. And so um, and a tumor can extend into the parotid duct uh, because the parotid duct sort of uh, opens into the buccal mucosa, as, as you remember from, from anatomy. So the tumor can actually travel back into the parotid uh, gland. So um, these are also um, areas of extension of, of tumor from the buccal mucosa. So uh, we talked about this already. Uh, so this would be classified uh, technically as a T2 buccal mucosa cancer because it's uh, greater than 2 cm but less than 4 cm. But like I said, I, I don't give the staging when I'm dictating my case. I just tell them, hey, it's a, two, it's a 3 cm tumor and then they sort of uh, you know, figure it out from there. Um, again, this technically is, is a very advanced uh, cancer. This is a cancer of the alveolar ridge. So there's the bone uh, of the alveolar ridge, ridge which, is, uh, which is involved by this tumor. Uh, but it's actually gone through the uh, cortical bone of the maxilla um, and extending into the, uh, you know, basically um, into the, linguals, um, the, 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 the lingual surface of the uh, gingiva and also the buccal surface of the lingiva, gingiva. So uh, this, by definition, has become now a T4A um, alveolar ridge cancer. Um, and uh, so, you know, the surgeon can see the cancer. So you have to tell them, hey, it's got this deep extension. It's going right through bone, which makes it all a much higher um, uh, stage tumor. Uh, this is another tumor. This is a uh, 
very extensive locally um, uh, advanced tumor of the hard palate on the left. And again, notice, uh, you know, important thing, uh, look for extension of tumor along the greater palatine foramen. So on the left side, you can see the foramen is slightly larger than the right, and that is indicative of perineural spread of cancer. This is something that the surgeon will never, ever see. So this is our responsibility to point it out to them. And also look at the MRI. Uh, I don't know if my arrow is projecting, but there's this enhancing uh, uh, guy, which is basically corresponding to the uh, the the finding on the on the CT, uh, and that's uh, actually enhancement along the uh, uh, greater palatine nerve, and this is important because now the 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 radiation oncologist will uh, sort of you know follow this up and see if if the enhancement goes up to say the skull base, then they'll include that in their field of view for for radiation. So this all makes a difference. Our imaging makes a difference uh, to the care of these patients. Uh, this is a more uh, locally advanced, um, um, moderately locally advanced uh, floor of mouth cancer. And uh, the reason it's locally advanced is basically it's, it's in, the, in the floor of mouth, but it's also extending into the masticator space. This is a subtle one. Uh, this would be a, um, a subtle retromolar trigone cancer. Again, ones that I miss all the time are, are the ones that I'm, I'm showing you guys. So uh, again, if you do some oblique imaging, and so puff cheek and oblique imaging, you can see that there's uh, at the arrow that there's some thickening of tissue at the retromolar trigone. And on the axial image, it's on the left side. And um, you know, you're know you sort of uh, on, the, on these superficial cancers, you're, uh, oftentimes you're just not gonna see them unless you do these maneuvers. Uh, but you know, as long as you have a, a good communication with your surgeon, uh, you can um, hopefully have all of the history and then you can help them more. And then, um, so the thing here would be obviously for them to look for any, any bony involvement or extension uh, along the pterygo mandibular raphae. Uh, this is uh, what would be classified as a uh, more, uh, you know, more advanced uh, local disease. This would be an actual T4B. So if you remember that uh, when I talked about the staging, uh, when, you, when the tumor extends into the masticator space, it becomes a T4B. So uh, here you can see that there is a, a tumor in the right retromolar trigone, which is um, uh, destroying uh, or, or eroding the bone. And also on the, on the PET, you can kind of see that there is extension into the masticator space. So uh, what I... In my report, I won't say that this is a T4B. I would say there's the tumor extends into the masticator space. And that, uh, you know, the surgeon is going to take that information and put it together with their clinical picture. And then they're going to stage it as a, you know, more uh, like a advanced local disease. Um, uh, and so th that would be a T4B. Another T4B, uh, this is, a, you know, uh, again, a retromolar trigone cancer on the right which has obviously eroded the mandible. And um, MRI really shows the involvement of the masticator space better. Uh, you could almost miss that on the CT. So I kind of like, uh, I think for, for just bony involvement, I like the CT. But for soft tissue extension, I do like MRI. Uh, it shows more uh, extent of involvement. So what are the take-home points for um, oral cavity cancer um, involvement? So... Um, Remember to start using depth of invasion for oral tongue cancers. Uh, that's an important uh, prognostic uh, finding. Uh, always look to see if there's invasion of the neurovascular bundle or if there's extension of the tumor across the midline lingual septum because all of those things make the tumor, um, you know, basically that impact surgery. Look for um, bony erosions, adjacent bony erosion, um, uh, you also want to look for the extension patterns of the retromolar trigone tumor. I, I showed you some examples of them, you know, going into the, um, the bone, into the parotid gland. Always look for perineural invasion because this is uh, one area where we can have really bad um, added value because the surgeon is never going to see this. And um, if you have um, history uh, at the appropriate time, you can even do maneuvers like puff cheek technique which will be really helpful for evaluation of oral cavity cancers. Um, so thank you very much again for uh, giving me the opportunity to, um, to talk to you. It was a pleasure.